Okay, hello everybody. Hello, hello, hello. How is everyone doing today? Phil here live on the stream. <clears throat> and I welcome you wholeheartedly to the one gameplay stream for today. Today is Sunday. And as you guys know, I usually only do one stream on Sundays because I usually have a lot of stuff to do Sunday nights. Today is no exception. Uh, between the week of preview, uh, patron stuff, and a big stack of bills that I need to pay in addition to some tax-related stuff, I'm going to be very busy tonight. So, today, only one gameplay stream. Today is Sunday, April 15th, 2018. And that means, that's right, guys, it's halfway through the month. Um, we're halfway through April. And I'm sure a lot of people are actually happy about that because we've all been fervently awaiting <clears throat> the release of God of War later this week. Um, we have not had a high-profile triple a game release in a ridiculous amount of time um i'd probably say the last really high profile triple a game release we had was monster hunter which i didn't care about um you know and before that crap november uh maybe even some would say october so yeah we've had a big string of time when we were like man i just can't wait for a new Big high-profile release to come out, and it looks like it will be happening this week. That's right, guys. <clears throat> so, let's talk, guys, a little bit. Let's talk about the schedule, and let's talk about what you guys uh, will be looking forward to this week on my streams. All right? Excuse me. So, here's where we, here we go. Here's how it's going to go. Okay? Uh, today, Bloodborne The Redemption Run. I started this on Friday... Had no idea how it would go. You know, I have not played Bloodborne since I played it originally back in 2015. So you're three years away. <clears throat> now, during that period of time, keep in mind, I played Dark Souls 3. Then I did a redemption run of Dark Souls 1. And then I replayed Dark Souls 2 with a different build. So it's not that I haven't been playing from software games. However, I have not played Bloodborne since I played it when it was new. So you're talking quite a lengthy amount of time between then and now. Um... <clears throat> so I didn't know how it was going to go. I had no idea how things would go. Uh, and if you did not see the stream or the videos yet, well, uh, I, even, let me put it this way. <clears throat> even I surprised myself with how much I was actually learning. If you remember the original run of Bloodborne, I didn't understand how the gun worked at all. I wasn't parrying. I didn't get it. People told me, I'll just shoot things. Okay. And I, you know, I was like scratching my head. Uh, this time around... Very, very different. Uh, I'm parrying stuff a lot. Uh, even, even bosses. You know, Father Gascoigne, who in the first playthrough whipped my ass a million times. This time I beat him on the third shot because I parried him mid-attack mid and did monstrous damage. Um, Pretty cool, right? <clears throat> so I had a lot of fun on Friday, quite frankly. You know, a very different run this time around. Um, Very different run. And I'm parrying normal enemies regularly, too. Also, I've got a skill build this time. Which everyone's saying is actually much more challenging than, say, a strength build. Uh, in my first run, I didn't have anything. I was just doing, like, overall leveling. Which obviously doesn't work in a, in a From Software game like this. So, being a specialist in one thing will should allow the game to be a lot easier. So, I am going for a specialist build in skill and then you know I'll, I'll obviously level up things like endurance vitality and strength appropriately when i need to but skill is going to be my main focus okay all right so that is the major difference also i'm not going to be grinding this playthrough and yes once finally i get to it i will be doing the old hunters dlc um so bloodborne today okay about four hours or so of bloodborne gameplay give or take <clears throat> As I said, no second stream tonight. I'll be busy with other stuff. Uh, tomorrow, more Bloodborne. That's right. Bloodborne Redemption Run continues tomorrow, Monday. And then tomorrow night, Nina Kuni 2. And pretty much that's par for the course for most of the week. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. You'll see Bloodborne during the daytime. And then Nino Kuni 2 at night. Now, what I'm hoping is if things keep going well with Nino Kuni 2, which, by the way, I'm at the end game of the game at this point. I'm in the final side content areas, uh, unlocking... <clears throat> The final uh, followers and or citizens for my kingdom. Leveling up my kingdom as much as I possibly can. And basically allowing myself to kind of do the final side content stuff of the game. I'm not going to do 100% of the side content. 
of Nina Kuni 2. If I did, I'd probably be a 100 hour long playthrough and I'm not going to bother with that. But I am doing the stuff that I feel is fun, like all the optional dungeons I come across, all the corrupted monsters I come across, uh, and I'm actively trying to recruit as many citizens as possible and complete as many side quests as possible. So it's been pretty fun, uh, and I am hoping that between three more sessions, you know, six more hours of gameplay of Nina Kuni, I should wrap up the playthrough by Wednesday night, okay? So that'll be the, 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 the rough schedule for, you know, the first half of the week. Then on Thursday, things mix up a little bit. Thursday, I will still be playing Bloodborne. So by then, if you really do the math, okay, um, I'll be 20 or more hours into Bloodborne. So I may actually be either in the Old Hunters DLC or near nearing, you know, maybe the end of the game. I'm not sure. It really depends. It depends on how things go um, <clears throat> in the playthrough, obviously. So we'll see how it goes. Um, so Thursday, Main Street, Bloodborne. Then Thursday night, this is when things get a little weird and crazy, guys. But get ready because it's going to be fun. So there's going to be no normal second stream. Normally, my second stream starts at 6.15 p.m. There will not be one Thursday night. Reason being is because Thursday night is the release of God of War. Okay? God of War. And I will be doing a special 9 p.m. late night release stream for God of War. At least two hours of gameplay, maybe a little more. We'll see. Okay? Then, on Friday... I will also be playing God of War all day long. So within the first day of release of God of War, I'll be playing eight plus hours of gameplay here on the stream for you guys. Should be pretty awesome. Okay. <clears throat> I'm definitely looking forward to it um, with all the hype and everything surrounding the game. It's a situation where either the game's going to be awesome and it's going to be a really awesome experience or we're going to see how overhyped this game actually was, right? So either way, I think it's a win-win. It's going to be a good, a good time. And then finally, Saturday coming up this week, I'm going to have a day off after eight straight days of constant streaming. Uh, and then I'm going to come back strong with more God of War and basically be playing God of War paired with Yakuza 6. Because once Nino Kuni 2 completes, I am going to begin Yakuza 6. I made the decision. And so it's going to be God of War and Yakuza 6 continuing on until I beat God of War. And then I'm going to replace God of War with Bloodborne until Bloodborne's over. And then when Bloodborne's over, then I'll find something to replace Bloodborne, all right? And that'll be kind of, you know, early to mid-May until finally we get to the new releases in May, which are going to be really pretty high-profile releases with games like State of Decay 2, Detroit Become Human, and the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection, all right? Fair enough? It should be pretty fun. I hope you guys are excited for it. All right, guys. Uh, so that's the rough schedule. There you, there you have it, Okay. Uh, a couple quick things to talk about on the stream today. Um, if you guys haven't heard, uh, Shenmue, a game series that was synonymous with the Dreamcast. All right, When the Sega Dreamcast was popular, which in America really never happened, but in Japan it was popular for about two years, um, Shenmue was a very popular series. A lot of people say Shenmue was the predecessor to the Yakuza series in a lot of ways. <laughs> Okay, um, it's getting an HD collection release later this year. We don't know what the date is yet for the release, but it is getting a release, uh, which is very surprising to a lot of people. Uh, in particular, myself, I never played Shenmue, and it's a game series that ever since I started doing game playthroughs and videos for the internet, people have asked, Phil, have you ever played Shenmue? Are you ever going to want to play it? And my answer was always, no, I never played it. Yes, I'd love to play it, but there's really no easy way to do so. Like... <clears throat> It was on the Dreamcast. They never really modernized it to play it on modern consoles, so how would I play, right? Uh, finally, now, we're going to get a chance. We're going to get a chance to check it out, and I'm very excited about this. So, hopefully, uh, you know, it comes out, what I would say, at a time that hopefully makes sense. Like, for example, the summertime would be perfect. Make Shenmue Collection come out during the summer when there's not a lot else going on, and a ton of people will check it out. If they release it during the hardcore gaming season, see what I mean? That's going to be like, you know, shooting yourself in the foot. Because then they'll, oh, we finally, we finally released it and no one bought it. Well, you released it between Red Dead Redemption, Call of Duty, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what did you think would happen? Um, <clears throat> so we'll see. 
We'll see what happens. Hopefully it gets a good release date. I'm looking forward to that this year. Definitely. Definitely looking forward to it. Okay. Um, let's see. Outside of that, um, is there anything else really going on with gaming news? Not really. Not really, guys. Um, pretty slow right now because I think everyone is just literally just sitting waiting for God of War to drop. <laughs> We're all just sitting around. Okay, it's coming out this week. We're very excited. You know, and uh, a lot. You know, I think that a lot of companies are staying away from doing any kind of news or updates on games until God of War is out and people are playing it and praising it. You know, E3 this year is going to be huge for sure. I definitely think that the E3 this year, we're going to end up with ridiculous amounts of information about all kinds of new games coming out. But right now, we're kind of going to get trickle trickle of information. Like, once a week, we get a big update. You know, first it was, there's a Spyro collection coming out. Then it was, God of War is a great game, and look forward to it. And then it was, Shenmue collection. So it seems like every week, we get, like, one big announcement, right? <clears throat> so... We shall see. Let's see what things uh, what happens here, okay? All right, uh, let's do some shout-outs. Or not shout-outs, excuse me. Let's do some plugs, guys. Let's get through the plug segment. And then when I'm done with the plug segment, then we can do shout-outs for people who have cheered on pre-stream here. Um, and then we'll get started with Bloodborne. Sound good? Okay, guys. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Especially, you know, since Friday, you guys have been pretty awesome. Uh, you know, the, the support you've lent me is when I started playing Bloodborne again. It was pretty uh, amazing. I didn't expect to have that many people on stream or people that supportive, but they were. And that's great. You guys have got a positive vibe going around the stream and the channel, which is great because now with God of War coming out, that's exactly what we need right now. So I think going to Bloodborne right now is the right choice. Okay. <clears throat> so thank you very much for that. Let's try to keep a positive atmosphere up on the stream today and all this week. Let's keep that vibe going. Um... Thank you for watching, whether you watch live on the stream or maybe you don't have a chance to catch everything when I live stream it and you actually watch it as I archive it on my DSP Gaming YouTube channel. Thank you for that as well, okay? Now, that being said, um, besides watching the streams and watching the videos on YouTube, there are other ways that you can go above and beyond if you so choose to help support me and allow me to continue to do this full time, you know, and put out these fun, free daily gameplay streams and all the videos that I upload to YouTube on a daily basis. So what are those things? Well, number one, Patreon. I have a Patreon campaign that I run every month over at patreon.com forward slash dark side fill. And if you give it a look, um, anything that you pledge to my Patreon significantly helps me to continue doing this. It helps me with the cost of things like games, electricity, the cost of business class internet that I need to live stream the way that I do, plus upload. Um, lots of, you know, things can add up and be pretty expensive when it comes to doing this for a living, okay? So your patron pledges help with that. But in addition to just helping me out, it also helps you out because you earn perks for your, your pledges, okay? What do you earn? Well, some of the perks you can earn, depending on how much you actually pledge, is, for example, getting a text or verbal shout-out in one of my videos on YouTube, <clears throat> or possibly um, getting the ability to nominate and vote on games for uh, upcoming special events, getting premium forum access on my website, thekingofhate.com, um, getting your questions answered on my bi-monthly Q&A show, Ask the King for Sure, which, by the way, hint, hint, the show is coming up on the 26th of April, just so everyone has a heads up, or even getting a private Q&A video made where you could submit, you know, questions, and I'll make it anywhere from a 15 to 25 long-minute video for you specifically, that you can either keep for yourself, you can show it to your friends, you could make it public to the world, it's totally up to you, all right? Um, so it's pretty awesome, the perks that you can earn as pledging to my Patreon. Give it a look over at patreon.com forward slash darksidephil. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who is uh, an ongoing patron already. Very much appreciated all of your support, and thank you to anyone who does give a look and consider pledging as well. All right, that's number one. <clears throat> number two, Teespring. My merchandise shop where you can buy really cool stuff like t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, mugs, stickers, high quality stuff. I can personally attest to the quality because I own a bunch of the stuff. In fact, the mug I use in every single stream since I bought it and the shirts uh, are high quality. I own like four of them myself and, uh, you know, only the highest quality stuff. I don't, I purposely don't go with the crappy low level stuff that they offer. I go for the higher quality shirts because they are a lot better. <clears throat> you know, and that's at the, the cost of me making more money, but I'd rather have you guys have a, have a better quality product. 
So, anything you buy from my Teespring shop, I make a commission on and it helps me out. Plus, you get a fun collectible. So, check it out. Teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash DSP Gaming. All right, guys. And last but not least, if you're here live on stream and you're having fun and you're like, man, this is a really cool run through Bloodborne. Glad Phil's doing it again. Um, and you want to contribute and get a shout out, all right, during the course of the stream. Well, you can either cheer with bits, subscribe to the channel, or tip me. And if you do any of those three things, I'll give you a verbal shout out during the stream. Keep in mind, this is Bloodborne, folks. If I'm in the midst of a million enemies and there's no safe spot, it will be very hard for me to do a live shout out in the middle of something like that. Um, but there is also ample time, you know, as I'm exploring and being careful to read shout outs and the like. So, <clears throat> so guys, um, thank you. For anyone who cheers subs and tips during my stream. And, you know, looking forward to giving you a shout out. Now, some criteria. Number one, if you're looking for a shout out, please keep it as concise as possible. Meaning, be as short worded as possible. The shorter the better. Something quick that I can read and respond to. Rather than a multiple 20 sentence paragraph. Uh, your life story. That's This is not the time for that. Especially if you have a long winded question. Save that for my Q&A show, Ask the King, coming up in a couple weeks. Okay. Save that for the appropriate time. <clears throat> um, also, please try to keep it positive. All right. Um, that being said, please, no inflammatory statements. Please, no political or religious statements. Please, no detailed questions about other YouTubers or streamers that I don't care about. Um, bottom line is, we're all here to have fun. All right. We're all here to enjoy ourselves and see how well I can do in a second run of Bloodborne. You know, uh, we're not here to try to be insulting to each other or try to be nasty or start a fight or whatever. And that's the whole point. So understand that shout outs are completely at my discretion. And if I do deem that what you said in your shout out is something that's going to either derail the stream or be a, a negative impact that I'm not going to read. It, all right. Um, now, <clears throat> if you would like, if you would like, ready, a visual, a visual. Thank you. <laughs> for your contributions on stream, all right? You can actually get an animation to play dependent on which method you use. So for example, if you either cheer 50 bits or more, or if you subscribe to the channel and then you click on the share button after the you subscribe, it shows up maybe like two minutes after, or if you tip me $5 or more, if you do any of those methods, all right, you'll get an on-screen thank you pop-up notification and animation. These were designed by longtime viewer, fan, and moderator, Popsicolo. So shout out to him, and thank you for making those for us, sir. Um, so you get both visual and verbal representations for your contributions here on the stream. Very nice, right? All righty then. Um, a few things, guys. A few things to cover before we get started here. Number one. We are driving for subscribers uh, in the month of April. We're halfway through April, and we have fluctuated very frequently. We pretty much, on average, had about 410 subscribers, I would say. It's been lower than that, and it's been higher than that. But we maintained around the same number, and I'm very appreciative of that. So thank you to anyone who is a subscriber to the channel. Uh, you know, very much appreciated, uh, you know, your contributions. However, we're looking to grow. I mean, real talk here, guys. We're looking to grow. And we can grow if we can get more people to subscribe. What are the benefits of subscribing? Number one, you get access to all of my emotes in the stream chat. And if you see subscribers, use them all the time. The DSP Pepe emote is certainly a huge favorite, but there are many others that people use as well that they really enjoy. Number two, you get the chat badge, which is a crown. Uh, under three months, it's a bronze crown. If you're a three-month supporter silver crown if they're a six month supporter a gold crown or for the year it's a gold crown with encrusted with delicious shiny rubies okay third if i run ads which i usually do during my main gameplay streams you don't have to see them you forego seeing the advertisements but i still get credit for them which is awesome so there's many benefits to subscribing all right uh in addition there are other there are multiple levels that you can subscribe to the channel. There's a tier one, which is the five dollar a month, then there's the tier two, which is ten bucks a month, and I get a bigger cut of that. And then there's the tier three, which is twenty five bucks a month, which I get an even larger cut of. So the higher tiers help me out more. And if you do the higher tiers, you will get access to special emotes. 
I believe tier two is the Super Saiyan God DSP emote, and then there's the Super Saiyan Blue DSP emote for tier three. So pretty nice. Um, <clears throat> pretty nice. And uh, thank you to anyone who does subscribe. Now we're pushing for five. Excuse me, 450 subs. Boy, I must misspeak there. 450 subs this month. The fact that we're doing Bloodborne every day now this week. The fact that God of War is coming out next week, all right? And then I'm going to do Yakuza soon. Um, I think we could definitely hit 450 subs. I don't see any reason why we won't, all right? As long as people keep active about it and let everyone know, hey, subscribe, it helps out, you know, be part of the community. Um, if we hit 450 subs, I'm bringing back the Patron's Choice playthrough where people who pledge to my Patreon are going to be nominating and then voting on games for a downtime playthrough. Previous playthroughs have included such games as Super Mario Sunshine, Spyro the Dragon 1, before the collection was even announced. Um, Crash Bandicoot were previous playthroughs. Um, so various Sonic the Hedgehog games over the years. As well as Persona and Yakuza. So there you go. There's some pretty awesome franchises that I experienced for the very first time because you guys nominated and voted on these games for me to play. If we hit 450 subs, I'm bringing back this special event. All right? So, please consider subscribing. Especially if you're not, but you enjoy the content. It's a great way to show support and to help everything out here. And we all work towards a fun goal. If we hit the goal, all right? We get a good uh, reward event, okay? All right, guys. Um, And then, one final thing before we get to shout-outs here. Um, tips. Some people ask me from time to time, Phil, you know, I don't understand the whole tips process because I can cheer... And I can sub through Twitch. It makes sense. It's right in front of me. But how do I tip? Um, if you want to tip, what you can do, if you take a look uh, below my stream, right here on the Twitch page, the Twitch channel, there should be a grid of information, including links to my YouTube channel and other websites. Uh, my rules, the stream rules, you should definitely read them and review them at, so you understand them during the course of today's stream. Very important. But also there's a section that says tips. And there's a picture of me posing with some Pokemon. And if you click on that picture, it will take you to my tips page where you can either Leave an anonymous tip or your name and a message if you actually like to get that verbal shout out during the course of the stream, okay? Now, if you can't see any of the information I just described, chances are you're on the mobile device, like a, a cell phone, and it's not it doesn't load that on the mobile version of Twitch. Instead, you could just type exclamation point tip into the stream chat, and that will allow you to go to the tips page and leave me a tip via that method. The cool thing about tips is, number one, they're done through PayPal, Meaning you don't have to do them through any other, like, for example, you don't have to go buy bits or do anything else or earn bits to do it. You can just do it right through PayPal. That's number one. Um, number two, I get tips right away. And it helps me out directly with things like paying the bills, uh, you know, cost of operating the business, taxes, etc. It helps me out. So thank you guys for any of your contributions during the stream. Looking forward to a fun one and giving you guys a lot of shout outs. All right. All right. Speaking of which, it's time to begin with the shout out segment. So here we go, guys. So first off, let me scroll all the way down. All right, it looks like overnight when I was not streaming, we got a new sub. It was Lef Varm. Lef Varm. Subscribe to the channel when I was not even live. So thank you to Lef Varm for that sub. I do appreciate that. And then we began the stream and the, the cheering began with King Swaggins, who cheered and said, Tonight is The Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead. I am pumped. Well... I am behind on The Walking Dead. I'm going to be very honest with everyone here. Um, the Walking Dead this season was a dud for me. Like, I watched all of it through the, the mid-season break. And then I watched, I, I want to say, two or three episodes after the mid-season break. And then I haven't, I, like, I'm probably behind two or three episodes at this point. And I don't really care. I'm sorry, but the show, the past two seasons, has just been a ridiculous ton of filler. Like... I understand they're dragging the show out to make money. I get that. But there's just too much filler at this point. Like, I just don't care about half the episodes. I watch it. I'm like, nothing's happening. There's a side character I don't care about. This is so effing boring. And at this point, I'm getting that vibe from a lot of people who are watching the show. Like, there was a time when the show was visceral, and there was constant stuff happening, and there was a lot of movement. You know, now it's just kind of like, everyone's in the same place. Everyone's doing the same thing. Oh, no. Someone might get... Oh, no. Negan might get bit by a zombie. Of course he's not going to get bit by a zombie. He's pretty much the only thing going for the show right now. So, of course, it's a whole waste of an episode. It's like, oh. Seriously. I just... Uh, this this season of The Walking Dead is the first season out of the entire show 
I'm totally not digging it at all. I'm very bored with the show at this point. Really, I am. I'm just, I'm falling asleep. And, you know, I hate to say it, but um, it sucks because that was a show that I really enjoyed. I think a lot of people, right? We really loved the show for a while. And we were at a point where, you know, oh, it's coming to a head. There's going to be all-out war. And actually, honestly, the season finale of last season I thought was fun. This season has been massively underwhelming, in my opinion. So, you know, it is what it is. I know some people uh, like the show still. You know, and me, I mean, I'm not giving up on it, but at the same time, like, I'm nowhere near hyped as I used to be. I just, I've, you know, I've, like I said, I have three shows that I'm behind on. Eventually, I'll watch them one of these nights, but I'm not really expecting much out of the show. I think tonight is the season finale, right? And I'm not expecting much out of it. I'm just not. <clears throat> so I guess we'll see what happens. Okay. Uh, shout out to Jack Spartacus. Jack Spartacus cheered and said, toot toot everybody. There you go. Thank you, Jack. Good to see you. King Swaggins cheered again. He says, what's popping, dog? You good? How's life treating you? Well, I mean, in regards to gaming and in regards to everything going on with that, um, having a lot of fun. You know, these past couple of weeks with Far Cry 5, Nino Kuni 2, um, <clears throat> being able to mix in games like PUBG and Ultra Street Fighter 2, and now starting a Bloodborne. Good. Very good. Very fun. You know, God of War has been good. Um... So in that regard, everything's good. Uh, you know, it's been a little tight here with time with, with my girlfriend, Kat, because we've been trying to balance our work life. And it's tough. It really is tough because, for example, there's stuff she wants to do outside of just work, but the timing of it doesn't necessarily work because a lot of times her work schedule doesn't coincide with the stuff she wants to do, uh, which sucks. Um, you know, we only get one day a week together, so it's a little frustrating in that regard because we do get a little bit of time every day. You know, sometimes we see each other in the morning. Sometimes we see each other, well, we always see each other around dinner time. We have dinner and have a little bit of time together then. And then at the end of the day, we usually have a little bit of time. But for the most part, it's not like we don't get a significant chunk of time to spend together on weekdays when we're both working. So it's really those days off that we get that are significant. But what we find ourselves doing a lot of the times during the days off is running around all day. Oh, this is our one day together, so we got to go do this. We got to go do this. We got to go do this. And the next thing you know, the day's over and we're exhausted. We're like, son of a bitch, you know. Um... This is how it is. This is how adult life is, guys. Don't listen to don't listen to me and say, oh man, you know, Phil's bitching about his life. No, this is how adult life is, you know. Especially a busy adult life when you got a working couple like us where both of us work constantly and we're doing this stuff. That's how life is. Um <clears throat> eventually we're hoping for a better balance. And quite frankly, I am hoping eventually, uh, in the next couple of months, once things uh settle in a little bit more, maybe we could take a little bit of time off. Maybe take like two, three days off from streaming for me where we can go do something together significant rather than just having one day off a week that's kind of, you know, goes by turbo speed. Um, so we'll see. You know, we'll see. Uh, right, that, right now there's no plans for that simply because I'm so busy with everything going on. Um, but we'll see what happens with that. Um, so I would say not bad. Life streaming, not bad. I mean, obviously you guys know about all the other stuff going on with finances and everything, and I'm not going to get into that because like I told you guys, I'm really not going to beat the dead horse anymore. You guys know about my situation. And you guys know that, you know, if you want to help out, you can. You know the methods. I've already described them on this pre-stream. Um, and there's no reason for me to keep beating the dead horse and bringing that stuff up every stream anymore. I want to keep stuff positive around here, okay? <clears throat> okay. Shout out to Illivisaurus, who cheered and said, It's 85 degrees with 90% humidity today here in Florida. I can't stand humidity. I wish I was on the West Coast. Um, I'm also in the same boat as you, Illivisaurus. I do not enjoy humidity. Reason being, humidity makes it so that really you can't really feel comfortable. You always feel sticky and sweaty, right? <clears throat> now, there are some people who love humidity. Uh, and I'll be honest, humidity does help my throat. You know, my throat, being that I'm on stream anywhere from 5 to 10 hours a day talking constantly, uh, gets completely shot and worn out all the time. So humidity, like having a humidifier at night, actually helps my throat out significantly. Um, <clears throat> but I hear you. I don't like hot, humid weather at all. I hate it. And it was one of the things in Connecticut that we used to get during the summer. It didn't make any sense. We would get hot, humid summers, but then we would get 
you know, really bad cold winters with tons of ice and shit. Um, you know, it was just, you get to the point where it's like, where, when does the good weather come in on the East Coast? And the answer is never. You just get the worst of everything and nothing of the in-between. It's pretty bad. Um, so I hear you. I definitely hear you, Olivisaurus. Um, Sergeant Woomy cheered and said the Xbox is, has, has got me thinking, what time frame do you consider a game to be a classic or a retro? Five years, ten years? <clears throat> well, um, honestly, there's different criteria. Obviously, time is one of them, but also I would say uh, iterations in a series. So, for example, if you actually think about Dark Souls 1, it's not that old of a game. It's not even 10 years old yet, okay? Uh, but a lot of people say Dark Souls 1 is a classic. Why? Well, because since Dark Souls 1, we had Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 3, and Bloodborne, right? So since it's technically kind of the fourth in a series of games, actually it's fifth, by the way, because if you're not aware, Demon Souls was the game that came before it. But I would say Dark Souls is a classic, all right? I would say Dark Souls is a classic, okay? Uh, but... That being said, guys, um, there are other games that become classics just because time has passed, right? So I don't know if there's a set definitive criteria. And plus, I think it's more of a subjective thing than an objective thing. One person might say, oh, Mass Effect 1 was a classic. Another person might say, what? That game was from Last Console Gen. It wasn't even a launch title, you know, for Last Console Gen. There's no way that could be considered a classic yet. So I think it's very, very subjective, Okay. All right, shout out to Richie7ACR. Richie says, Phil, are you going to do the Chalice Dungeons? It's a grind, but leads to several unique bosses that you didn't get up to. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Richie, I'm well aware of the Chalice Dungeons. I guess you really didn't watch the link, the, the, the actual uh, end of the original playthrough. I did a lot of the Chalice Dungeon stuff. Um, the only reason I stopped doing the Chalice Dungeons, quite frankly, was because they weren't very entertaining. They were very repetitive. To the point where they were pretty much boring until I finally got to like a boss that would be ridiculously overpowered and whip my butt, and then I, you know, figure out a way to fight it and beat it. <clears throat> and uh, you know, I didn't really enjoy doing them. You know, the main game is well designed and well thought out. The chalice dungeons are randomized and not very fun, in my opinion. So I am well aware that if I grinded through the chalice dungeons, I would have gotten to like a couple more unique bosses or whatever. But I really didn't care. You know, if they really wanted that to be part of the main part of the game, they should have put it into the main part of the game, right? Instead of hiding it behind this boring, grinding, randomly designed, repetitive stuff, okay? So, there you go, guys. Um, We'll see. We'll see what happens. As I said, I'm not I'm not ruling it out and saying 100% I'm not doing challenge dungeons or chalice dungeons, but I'm also not going to say definitively, oh yeah, I'm doing them. What I'd like to do is play it by ear. Let's see when I actually do finish Bloodborne, the Redemption run. And when I finally do finish it, okay, do I have time to do it? Is it something people want to see? Maybe I do it as a secondary thing and I have another main game for the streams. I don't know. We'll see. We'll play it by ear and go from there rather than promise something that, you know, and then I can't, you know, can't hold the promise or whatever. Uh, oh my God, excuse me. <clears throat> All right. Shout out to Kao Abasa. Who cheered and said, I want that surgery f fucking bad. I have no idea what you're talking about. I did not talk about surgery whatsoever today on the stream. So you have confused me thoroughly. <laughs> okay. Um, Shout out to the Aston Martin. He cheered. He said, will you be watching the Street Fighter reality show called E-League The Challenger on TBS? And would you ever consider participating in a gaming show like that? No. Not only will I not be watching a staged reality show, because that's exactly what all those reality shows are. They're all staged. Uh, I would not participate in one. I, oh, years and years and years ago, when I was very popular on YouTube, uh, I was invited to be on, what was it called? The Ultimate Gamer, which was the original gaming reality TV show uh, from back in the day. You know, we're talking upwards of eight years ago. Uh, I forget if I was invited in 2009 or 2010. But I was invited... And I said, no, I don't want to be on your show. I know it's going to be just scripted, staged reality shows, like all these crappy reality shows, and I hate that. Um, so they went out, and they got Justin Wong. 
And Justin Wong ended up being on one of the seasons of the show. Because what it is, they wanted a fighting game player. And they knew that I was like, what at the time, I was one of the biggest and most controversial fighting game players on the internet. And they wanted me for the show because of that. But I declined, so then they got Justin instead. I'm sure they probably offered it to a bunch of people. And then Justin was finally the one who accepted. So, um, so there you go. Um, but no, I would never be on one of those crappy reality shows. Hell no. Uh, shout out to Sergeant Woomy. Sergeant Woomy cheered and said, As a great man once said, if a man does not have the sauce, he is lost. But the same man can be lost in the sauce. Very wide words, Phil. That's right. I said that. I said, if a man does not have the sauce, then he is lost. But the same man can be lost in the sauce. Don't get lost in the sauce. Whatever you do. <clears throat> Shout out to T. Mariucci. T. Mariucci has resubscribed to the channel for the sixth month in a row. Thank you very much. King Swag gets cheered. He says, you either die a fan or live long enough to see yourself become a detractor. <laughs> you know what's sad? I hate to say this. I do. But it seems to me what happens a lot is you got people who just cannot stay out of the drama, all right? And this is real talk. There's people who just can't stay out of the fucking drama. Even though, if you just hang out on my streams and have fun with me every day, it's a very positive and fun experience. But then if you allow yourself to get sucked into the toxic toilet of the internet, which has all this negative stuff about me constantly that's all slander and nonsense, okay? All this defamatory stuff that's that's so ridiculous. The other day, someone put out a video saying I rage quit extinction when I'm one of the few people who actually beat the game on the internet. Ridiculous, right? That's the kind of crap they put out about me on a daily basis. But if you let yourself get sucked into it, next thing you know, now you're in the chats of them and everything. And then you find yourself, oh no, you, you, know, you do something wrong, you get into trouble, and now, oh, well, no, I want to be associated with something, so I'm going to join the detractors now. It's like, yeah, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, seriously. What kind of a mindset is that? <clears throat> and that's sad. Oh, I really support Phil. He's great. I love the co free content he puts out. Oops, I went out of my way to do something really stupid. I got banned from his chat, so now I'm going to become his most heated enemy. It's like, what? <laughs> and the thing is, a lot of the times, I'm not even involved with the crap, you know? Um, but sometimes I am, you know? you get. Mo I had a moderator in here who literally was going into the chats of people who he knew he, that he should not be associating with. He was saying, ins you know, hurtful stuff about me constantly. He was trying to convince people not to support me. He was unbanning people in the stream chat who were getting banned on purpose so he could go laugh it up with them and yuck it up behind the scenes that he was unbanning people doing bad things in the chat. And then he wonders why he's permanently banned and he can't come back. It's like, well, you're really stupid, you know? <clears throat> but, um, you know, logical people, intelligent people, um... Don't do that kind of shit. The bottom line is it's just immature people who are looking for drama, seek drama where they can find it. And if you can't find it in my stream, because I'm pretty much weeding out all the drama on my streams these days, uh, you go find it somewhere else. So there you go. If you're here for the drama, well, you know, then you're here for the wrong reason. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so it is what it is. That's life, I guess. Uh, shout out to Depressed Frog Poster, who subscribed to the channel. Popsicolo did a 100-bit cheer, which makes him the cheerleader for today, by the way. And he says, hold on a second here. He says, got another full day of sculpting ahead of me. Did eight hours yesterday on audio only, but may pop in if I get the chance. All right, Pops. Well, thank you very much. <clears throat> by the way, we've got someone who is gifting me a ton of subs today. Um, well, or at least he's gifting a ton of subs to other people. And... So the sub count is going up right now. I don't know who this is. I think it's K K Kulu Yaku is basically gifting me a ton of subscriptions today. So my subs are going way up, and I'll let you guys know what the sub count is after I finish with the shout-outs here today. Okay? <clears throat> so shout-out to, here we go, GOP Convention is now at tier uh, a tier one sub to the channel because they were gifted a sub. Now, first of all, the GOP convention in America does not have a Twitch channel. So it's not, <laughs> that's not like their official Twitch channel, okay? Uh, Jesse plays cheer. He said, we are born by the blood, made by the blood, undone by the blood, and fear the old blood. Blood. Okay. White House is now subscribed to the channel. <laughs> Thanks to this guy gifting subs. 
the White House, FYI, guys, does not have an official Twitch channel, just so you guys know. Johnny Soros Rex Charity said, we appreciate your hard work every day, Phil. Thank you. Infowars is now subscribed to the channel. Ladies and gentlemen, Infowars does not actually have an official Twitch channel. So these are all, you know, really silly channels that are getting gift subs to, to my channel today. <laughs> uh, Make America Great Again is now subscribed to the channel. Yes, yes, yes. Staying Fate actually subscribed to the channel, and this is not a gifted sub, so thank you, Staying Fate, for the sub. I appreciate that. From Software is now subscribed to the channel. From Software's official channel is now subscribed to the channel. Yes, yes. I'm sure they definitely, they're, that's a legit sub and not a gifted one. Logan Paul was taken. Is now subscribed to the channel. Yes. 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 Yes, thank you. <laughs> and Dragon Ball Fighters RD. I don't know what that is. Like, Dragon Ball Fighters is obviously the game. Dragon Ball Fighters RD sounds like another kind of channel around that. Is now subscribed to the channel. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, anyway... Thank you to the person who is gifting me, well, gifting all these people subs. It is much appreciated. <clears throat> Thanks for that support. And uh, very nice. Okay, shout out to Sergeant Wumi, who cheered again and said, Do you think Xbox would do enough with the past games to lift up the brand, or will the engine blow up and Sony will have a lap ahead? Hmm. Well, here's the thing. Undoubtedly, as I've said yesterday on pre-stream, the PS4 is the leader of this console generation. Just based on the amount of people who bought the console and the console exclusives. All right, But Xbox One does have a pretty big market share at this point. Over the years, they've had a lot of incentives like sell the console with a bundle and get the game, a game for free. That kind of stuff. So that being said, um, you know, it's not that Microsoft doesn't have the ability to come back. It's that they need to have games. And right now, Microsoft just doesn't have any system seller games. I mean, they actually had the audacity to make a Sea of Thieves console bundle. Uh, what? Sea of Thieves, one of the most bare-bones games ever released, overhyped out the wazoo, and now no one's talking about it. It's like literally a dead game. It came out insanely hyped. Everyone played at launch week, so this game sucks. There's no content. And no one plays it anymore. No one talks about it. The game is dead. It really is dead. Um, but, you know, Microsoft trying to push it as a system seller. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ludicrous. I can't imagine how many Sea of Thieves bundles there are out there on store shelves that will never sell. Or just sitting on a warehouse shelf never to be purchased. Never. Okay? So... That's what I mean. Microsoft really needs to make good games, system-exclusive games, if they're going to sell consoles and get back to where they were. And they just have not had them at all. You know, Halo, is it still continuing? Yes. Is it any good? No. Gears of War, is it still continuing? Yes. Does anyone care? No. <clears throat> they need something. They need something big. And right now, they have diddly dick. They have nothing. So, if they want to come back and actually compete with Sony... They basically need uh, <clears throat> something to sell a console, which they don't have right now. Okay. All right. Uh, Space Fetus just cheered and said, do you have a favorite game controller from any console generation? Um, I said this many times, and I'll say it again. The Super NES controller, I feel, was the most superior controller out there. The first controller to have triggers. Right? Shoulder buttons slash triggers. It wasn't really triggers. I guess it was shoulder buttons. Four face buttons plus the start select and a D-pad that was one of the most responsive in the industry. You know? I could actually do uh, walking... <coughs> excuse me. Walk forward spinning pile drivers with Zangief in Street Fighter 2 um, on the SNES because the controller D-pad was so good. Um, yeah. And it's been a while. You know, it's funny because we have these modernized controllers and the D-pads aren't even close to being as good as the D-pads that were back in the day, which is hilarious to me, but it is what it is. SNES controller, my favorite controller of all time. There you go. Um, Kao Basa cheered and said, look here, look, listen. I guess that's the new detractor meme or something stupid. I don't know, and I don't care. 
Kojima World Order is now subscribed to the channel. Even though they don't exist. Very nice. Olivia Soros cheered. She says, I will never understand your detractors. Why would you want to troll a successful entrepreneur? Just because you're successful through hard work and determination doesn't warrant all the trolling. We'll, we will not get into that. As I said, Olivia, we're keeping the streams positive and we're not getting into that. <clears throat> Fred Fox is now subscribed to the channel. Yes, Fred Fox. Yes, very nice. So obviously this person who's gifting all these subs is, is I mean, obviously they're helping, but they're also trolling at the same time. So whatever, <laughs> whatever. doesn't hurt anything, so I don't care. Uh, Jubaka says, do I think this Phil Spencer is a moron for saying narrative games like G-O-D? I don't even know what that is. What is G-O-D? G-O-D? God of what? I don't even know what that is, but anyway. And H-Z-D, which I guess is Horizon Zero Dawn, are a thing of the past. Um, listen. The bottom line is that we've had two to three years where the most popular games have been games that are not very good. I'm sorry to say that, but it's true. You had, it all started with games like Destiny, and then you went ran off with games like The Division and Ghost Recon Wildlands. And these games have just become games with almost no narrative, no real interesting story at all. It's just grinding gameplay that you do with your buddies, right? Then, in the last several months, we've had a trend of Battle Royal games. Again, no story, just kind of repetitive gameplay, all right? And that's okay. There's definitely a place. There's definitely a place in gaming for repetitive style gameplay. It, it, you know, it has a place, it exists, and it's fine. But that doesn't mean that you, you know, there's not a place for all those other amazing narrative gameplay experiences that we've had in the past in the future. That's ridiculous. Just because one kind of game is a fad and is dominant now, number one, it's probably not going to be a fad long term. And number two, it doesn't mean that people don't want variety in games. You know what I mean? Um, just how stupid is it that, you know, people don't realize this. How many fads of gaming have we had since I started on YouTube? Let's see. First, it was first-person shooter games. They were all the rage. They were huge, all the rage, all right? And, you know, everyone loved first-person shooters. Within two to three years of me doing YouTube, all the first-person shooters had fizzled out besides Call of Duty, and so there were no more. Then it was zombie games, and we had a bajillion zombie games. Zombie, zombie, zombies, every kind of possible fucking zombie game you could think of. A big fad with Left 4 Dead and games like that, and then they died out. Then we had... <clears throat> The PC-oriented indie horror games where people could put a face cam up and scream like a ninny girl. That's how PewDiePie got his start and all of his knockoff people, who I will not mention, but a bajillion people who all copied PewDiePie and how they all got popular on YouTube by acting like little sissy girls playing these scream-at-the-camera indie horror games. Then those games fizzled out. Then we had games like Minecraft and indie-style games where it was more about creation and, and gameplay and getting hooked on a creative universe than anything else. And then those games fizzled out. Then we moved on to these cooperative online games with no story, but just grinding gameplay, and it's only fun because you play with your buddies. And now we moved on to the Battle Royal games. How do people not realize these are fads? You know what I mean? Every single one of these fads has died out. You know what I mean? Every single one. So what makes what makes someone like Phil Spencer think that just because a fad is popular it means no one wants other kinds of games? You tell me. I have no idea. I honestly don't even know if Phil Spencer said what, what this person has saying that he said. But if he did, that's just ridiculously silly. Okay? It just is. Um, there is a place for narrative-based games. There's a place for games with great gameplay. There's a place for games that have it all. Graphics, gameplay, and narrative. And I think that's why, as I said, I think that's why God of War is not having its butt kissed so hard is because it's been so long. Since we've actually had a game that has everything good. It's not just about the co-op. It's not just about the repetitive gameplay that hooks you. It's not just about one aspect. That game apparently has it all. Alright. So there you go. Um, <laughs> Alright. Hold on a second here. Shout out to Rave Comic. Who said dead memes have now subscribed to your channel. I guess so. Speaking of which... Please Play Bloodborne has subscribed to the channel. Yes. Yes. Which, of course, we know is probably just a ge generic channel. Destiny has subscribed to the channel. Yes. I'm sure Destiny, my biggest fan on the internet, 
will enjoy using all of my emotes on a regular basis. It's obvious. All right, it's obvious. Destiny is going to just blow the lid off this place. <laughs> uh, shout out to 44K Panda. <clears throat> we did a 50-bit cheer and said, there's an Xbox One Sea of Thieves limited edition controller that sells for $135. <laughs> what in the holy hell? Are you serious? I, have a, I would have a hard time paying $135 for any kind of game controller. I mean, it's it, joysticks, full, big-ass joysticks for consoles sell for around between $130 to $150. And even that's really hard for me to swallow in the modern era to pay that much for a game controller. $135 for Sea of Thieves controller? Are you stupid? Good Lord. And the, the sad fact is, someone probably paid for that, too. Like, someone probably bought it. <laughs> Shout out to Winter Wolfie. Winter Wolfie tipped me $5. You are the top tipper for the day, Winter Wolfie. Thank you very much. By the way, I will be updating the stream stats at the end of this uh, shoutout segment, just that we're very heavily into the shoutouts right now. Uh, so, Winter Wolfie uh, tipped me 5 bucks and says, Phil, don't take this the wrong way, but I originally found out about you via hate and detractors, but I've actually grown fond of you, and I'm very sorry if saying this makes you upset, but you're a wonderful streamer. Keep doing what you love. You know what, Winter Wolfie? You've upset me greatly by calling me a wonderful streamer. How dare you? We were supposed to do is spit on me and slap me around, treat me like a, a horrible, downtrodden person and call me a peon. And, you know, then you were supposed to head out and make a million detractor videos about me. So how dare you? <laughs> now, obviously, Winter Wolfie, thank you very much for the tip. I appreciate that. And obviously, thank you for the kind words. Um, you're not the first and you certainly won't be the last. The, the, there's the sad fact is, Winter Wolfie, you are the exception to the rule. All right, you are. You're the exception to the rule. And what I mean by that, okay, is that there are a bunch of people who watch negative stuff about me and they say, man, that Phil is a piece of crap. I believe everything I hear on the internet. I'll never watch him. And in fact, I'm not going to join in on calling him a jerk and insulting him and slandering his name on the internet constantly. All right. But then there are people who see it and they're like, now, wait a minute. This sounds, this sounds too ludicrous to be true. Right? It just sounds too ridiculous. I want to do a little bit of research for myself and figure out what's going on. And then some of those people will come to my streams and they'll say, well, you know what? I don't really like Phil. This, this isn't my cup of tea, but I'm glad that at least I checked it out to get it from the horse's mouth. And that's perfectly fine. But then there's some people, and I guess you're one of the Winter Wolfie, who they come over and they say, wow, you know, I'm watching Phil's stream. And this is really, if you actually watch the raw stream instead of just this highly edited video that, that cherry picks certain moments... Wow, this actually is not anything like how they portray Phil. You know, yeah, he rages, but that's not the majority of his gameplay sessions. He actually is personable. He has fun conversations with his viewers. You know, he does shoutouts on a regular basis. He's very positive about gaming in general. It's just every once in a while he gets a little riled up about something. Maybe he gets stuck on a part of a game and he rages, but that's not the majority of what he does. What a gross misrepresentation that these people do on a regular basis. Now, I wonder why they do that. And, of course, they do research and figure out, oh, because YouTube is a place where if you only focus on the negative, you get popular. If you make negative dramatic videos on YouTube, YouTube actually has a search engine and an algorithm system that pushes those videos to the forefront. So right now, I'm playing Bloodborne The Redemption Run, and I'm doing way better this time around than I did in my first playthrough. But immediately, people are making negative videos. Phil sucks at Bloodborne even now. Here it is. Here's the highlights. And they just show the 10 times that I die, Right? And that video will get pushed to the front of YouTube search results and people will find that video before they ever watch my Bloodborne Redemption run playthrough because that's how YouTube works. It's a negative, toxic cesspool. It's the own their own fault that their website is toxic and falling apart because they made it that way with their own algorithms, okay? So the bottom line is, um, I'm not surprised that there are people who hate me, but the vast majority of them are grossly misinformed and Winter Wolfie, you are the exception to the rule. You came over and started watching this stuff on your own and enjoyed it. And thank you for that. And thank you for the tip. I appreciate that. If only, if only one out of 10 people who saw the negative shit about me actually gave me a chance, I would be incredibly popular. But the bottom line is some people are just too gullible. They see this stuff and they're like, well, this guy, this video says this guy's terrible. All I see is terrible stuff in this video. It must be true. You know, there are people out there who think I'm terrible at Street Fighter, despite the fact 
Uh, there is concrete evidence, concrete evidence of tournament results and hundreds, if not thousands of matches of me playing well in Street Fighter on the internet. But people want to just believe that I'm bad at it just so they can have their negative jollies and have their overdramatic negative videos on YouTube. So it is what it is, guys. All right. Um. All right. Sergeant Wumi Cheer said, In my honest opinion, Xbox needs two game sellers. A single-player game, like a cooler version of the Fable series, would be good. And an also multiplayer game, something like Halo or Gears of War, and the keyword is something like. Also, more spoilers, the God of War has a beard, and Yakuza 6 takes place in Japan. Well, there you go. Uh, shout out to Doggy Dog 20 who is subscribed to the channel now. Uh, I actually apologize, guys, because I think most of these subs are gifted that are now subbed to the channel. FYI. Um, we've got Low Tier God, Evo, Twitch, Ludwig, and Sonichu1982. All subscribed to the channel. I believe they're all gifted subs. So there you go. And like I said, guys, I will update the stream stats before we start with gameplay, don't worry, because now they are drastically different. Subs went up, we got top cheer and top tip to put up there, so. Eternal Napalm did a 100-bit cheer, and he said, Microsoft only wants multiplayer games and streams as a service because it's easy to monetize. <clears throat> nothing more, nothing less. PS4 and Switch have all the sweet exclusives. Well, there you go. Kalbasa just cheered and said, do you want to play the fucking game, DSP? Uh, I do eventually, but I have to get through shoutouts first, Kalbasa. That's how it works. That's how interactive streamings work, you know? A lot of people don't realize that. Just like people are now whining. Yes, they're whining. But Phil, he's doing a redemption run at Bloodborne, but he's, 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 he's talking to stream chat. He's talking to stream chat during the playthrough. He's supposed to be a redemption run. He's not supposed to talk to stream chat. <laughs> and it's like, are you serious? Like, guys... All right, this is no, this is not a big news flash or an update. It was over a year ago. Over a year ago, I changed up my streaming schedule, and I changed up my streaming style, and I made it now that I'm an interactive streamer on Twitch, and this is my focus. This is what I want to do moving forward. All right. Um, and the bottom line is, that's how it works. That's how you're successful on Twitch by interacting with your viewers. By talking with them, by reading the stream chat, by giving shout outs. I've learned this firsthand, trust me, after years of streaming and not doing that. Years of trying to put myself in an isolation chamber and ignore stream chat and stuff when I play games. It doesn't work. It's 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 a waste. It's a huge waste of interactivity and a resource that you can have to make stuff better on stream. And now I know that. And I learned that a year ago when you guys convinced me of doing it. And I tried it. I was like, wow, this is much better. And people have overwhelmingly told me in the last year that my gameplay content is far better now than it had been for years before because that isolation kind of playthrough doesn't work anymore. All right? <clears throat> people want to be more positive. People want to have interactivity. People want that. They don't just want a, oh, wow, it's just Phil sitting in a room by himself playing a video game. They want Phil is interactive with the internet and having fun and joking and all kinds of funny stuff going on while Phil plays games. That's what they want. All right. So, no, guys. Sorry. This is not Bloodborne. Phil sits in an isolation booth playthrough. All right. It's just not going to happen. All right. It's not going to happen. It's 2018. Things have changed. So, there you have it. And you could sit and whine and stamp your feet. You could flop your jowls as much as you want. The playthrough ain't going to change. All right. The bottom line is people are enjoying the playthrough. Deal with it. <clears throat> okay. Shout out to Jubaka. And he says, have you ever thought about doing an all-star co-op with a big-time YouTuber or streamer like Angry Joe? It would boost your viewers. Like do it with Nin like Ninja did with Drake. Dude, Dubaka, do you not realize no one wants to co-op with me? <laughs> the only people who want to collab with me are people who just don't care about negativity. Like, for example, I'll give you a, a really cool example of a really nice guy. Brian. Styles the deal, okay? This guy, he's probably one of the most down-to-earth people I know. He doesn't give a shit that so many people hate on me. <clears throat> he's had so much fun joining my streams and hanging out with me, and I've been on his podcast and stuff. And we have a good time. Every time that we play a game together, whether it's a fighting game, whether it's a shooter game, whatever we play, we have a good time. You know, we're two guys that are easygoing, and 
he's the kind of guy that I know, you know, in real life, we could probably be good friends too. It just so happens we live on the opposite sides of the country. But I know that he's a kind of easygoing guy, you know. I just know he's a nice guy. And that's what I mean. Like, that's the kind of person. People who have a public internet persona already are not going to want to do co-op with me because they know what happens. They know the sick community of people who follow me around, people who I have no association with and want nothing to do with, but they just, they follow me no matter what, like a swarm of flies, all right, like a pestilence, they follow me around negatively with toxic crap, so they know, oh wow, Phil's gonna do a collab with someone, immediately that person would be like lambasted and attacked, all right, so no one's gonna do that, it's time to wake up, dude, uh, Bionichu was gifted a subscription, so congrats by you, but it's kind of odd you're the only person who's a normal stream chatter who was gifted a subscription while everyone else was like a joke one. That's kind of weird. <clears throat> I'm, I'm not really suspecting anything. I don't really care, by the way. <laughs> okay. Shout out to Rave Comic who cheered and said, stop being interactive and trying to be a good streamer. Stop that. Okay. Why, how dare I be interacting? I gotta stop immediately and go back to my old ways. I will ignore all of you completely. <laughs> yeah. How dare I? How dare I actually try to be entertaining? <laughs> okay. Uh, shout out to Space Fetus. He says, you know what? I've also heard about you from Troll Videos, and I stayed because I enjoy your stream, so stay positive. Thank you, Space Fetus. It's good to hear that. It really is. Okay. King Swaggins cheered and said, helpful tip. Try using pungent fruit cocktails on the blood-starved beast. Throw them in the corners of the room and sh charge attack from behind. Pungent fruit cocktail? They don't have fruit cocktail in Bloodborne. <laughs> fruit cocktail? Maybe he means blood cocktail. There's no such thing as a pungent fruit cocktail in Bloodborne. <laughs> that might be a backfire tip right there. That might be a total backfire tip. That's pretty funny. A fruit cocktail. Throw a delicious yo play yogurt at the bluff starred beast. He'll be digging for the fruit at the bottom of the cup, and then you can split backstab him. <laughs> there you go. Throw him a nice, a nice uh, Greek yogurt. He'll have lactose intolerance, and then you'll just be able to take him from behind. <laughs> oh my god, that was pretty funny. <clears throat> Shout out to Rave Comic, who cheered and said DSP is one of the best streamers. Lol. Kobasa cheered and said I love you, Phil. Don't ever change. Eternal Napalm cheered. And he said, in the Old Hunter's expansion, a secret will be revealed to you that will unlock the deepest mysteries of Bloodborne. Your eyes are yet to open. <laughs> okay, I added that laugh at the end, but thank you, Eternal Napalm, for the cheer. King Swaggins just cheered and said, shout out to Logic, one of the best rappers in the game. I don't even know who that is. I've never heard a single lyric from Logic. <clears throat> All right, and Fly Eagles Fly has resubbed for a 12th month in a row, one year of support, earning himself the gold crown encrusted with beautiful gems, beautiful rubies as a chat crown badge. Thank you, Fly Eagles Fly, for your support. <clears throat> I do very much appreciate that, man. Um, all right, guess what? Now we have to update the stream stats. Oh, my goodness. Excuse me, first of all. Let's take a look here. Let's see here. First of all, where are we with subs? 433 subs. So all those crazy gifted subs, which a lot of which were troll subs, still help out. So I will say this, even though it may have been, you know, silly. Thank you to the person who gifted all those subs. It's very much appreciated. We're up to 433. Thank you very much. Obviously, that gives us a lot of headway to hit the 450. All right. We're on our way. <clears throat> top cheer. I actually have to confirm this. I think it's a tie between Eternal Napalm and Popsicolo, but I just want to scroll down and confirm that before I update the stats. I think they're both tied with 100-bit cheer. Yes, they are. Okay. So there you go. Let me update that. Hold on. Hold on here, guys. Okay. And then the top tip is Winter Wolfie. Thank you, Winter Wolfie. Appreciate that. 
So now let's get this centered. There we go. Good stuff. And now let me get everything scrolling back up here. Get everything in line. Oh, we got a cheer from Pack of Wild Chimps who says, So, Phil, eventually maybe Cat will co-op with you. We'd love that. Well, we would have to... Number one. All right. Number one, we need a game that both of us want to play. Number two, it would have to be a game that has co-op capability. Okay. Uh, so far, it hasn't happened. Uh, we'll see. It just sucks that there aren't really a lot of great co-op games out there anymore. Just being real with you guys, there's not. Um, <clears throat> all right. So... Ah, I think we're good. Are we good? Is that it? I think I've done all my shout outs. Thank you guys, obviously, for the support, for the person who gifted a ton of subs. Thank you for Winter Wolfie for the tip. Thank you for those who have cheered. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Wait a minute. Look at this. 44K Panda just gifted a sub to Jake Likes Cats. So thank you to 44K Panda for the gifted sub, and congratulations to Jake Likes Cats for receiving that sub. <clears throat> King Swaggin says, get the Blade of Mercy, best skill weapon, game would be easy mode. Yeah, but you don't get the Blade of Mercy till later on when you fight the crow, right? And I'm not going to kill the crow now, so so there you go. There you go. Okay, are we good? Let me actually double check sub count. We're now up to 434. So we'll update it one more time. <clears throat> one more time. One more time. It's time to celebrate. <laughs> that stupid song. I don't even know what song that is. <clears throat> All right. So, oh, Swaggins just cheered. He said, no, we are not good. Please keep going with the pre-stream. All right. Whoa. Otaku Blood Elite just did a 500-bit cheer to become the cheerleader for today and says, Bloodborne, so glad this is back. Thank you, Otaku Blood Elite, for the cheer. And now I must update the top cheer for it is you. Who is the top cheer? Let's do that. Very nice. Wait a minute, there's a team missing. What happened? What the? There we go. Otaku Blood Elite. <clears throat> there we go. And shout out to King Swaggins, who just did a 501-bit cheer and became the cheerleader for today's stream. So now King Swaggins is the cheerleader, and I have to update that. Wow. Wow. There you go. some space there okay now I think we're finally settled in here <clears throat> okay whoa wait a minute Winter Wolfie has gifted a sub to Violent Rampage 2 thank you Winter Wolfie for that gifted sub and now I believe hold on Yes, we're now up to 436 subscribers. We've jumped two somehow. That actually means someone else subscribed but didn't hit the share button. So we're up to 436 subs. And King Swaggins just cheered again. A 502-bit cheer. <laughs> he topped himself. Shit. There we go. So thank you for the gifted sub. Thank you. For the cheer. Whoa. Blood Starved Beast just tipped me $5. He said, can we start now? I want to kick your butt. The Blood Starved Beast has tipped me $5. So there you go. Get that up there. Very nice. All right. <clears throat> Pretty awesome. All right, guys. Thank you very much for all of this support. Not before I even started. Wait a minute. Big Tone just tipped me $10. They said Bloodborne Hype. So Big Tone, Big Tone just kicked the other tippers out of the way. He's the top tipper now with 10 bucks. Thank you, Big Tone. Let's update that. Thank you, 
Thank you, Big Tone. Very nice. All right. Now, I think I have fully updated everything. Thank you guys again so much for all of this support. Before we've even started with the gameplay, we got this much support. It's pretty awesome. And now, quite frankly, because of all those gifted subs, we're in a really good position for hitting the sub goal this, this month. All right. So thanks a lot for that. And thanks for everyone who tipped, who cheered. Very awesome of you guys. Thank you guys very much. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Let's now end the pre-stream. All right. And then we'll jump back into Bloodborne. We're right after the cathedral area, you know, the tower with the guy on the turret and the cathedral. I've cleared it out and I opened the shortcut gate and now I'm heading towards the blood starved beast. Although I think there is a, there's got to be a lantern around there somewhere. I can't freaking remember, but I swear there's a lantern because, um, you know, I cleared the whole area out, but I don't think that, oh my God, I just received a $20 tip from planet Jeff and planet Jeff said, this is one of the silliest pre streams I've ever witnessed. It should be a good day. Thank you, Planet Jeff, for the $20 tip. Thank you very, very much. Let's update that now. Good Lord. Thank you, thank you, Planet Jeff. You are now the top tipper. <clears throat> All right. So, thank you, Planet Jeff. As I was saying... Yes, I believe we're right in the area before the Blood Starved Beast, but I don't remember. I don't remember at all. Um, I don't remember if there's a lantern in the area. And I hope there is because I have like like 18,000 Blood Echoes to use. <laughs> Maybe I should just use one of those emblems to return back to the Hunter's Dream and use them. Because I don't want to. I don't want to waste them. I want to level up my skill more, you know, and my vitality and stuff. Um, so maybe I should do that first. I don't know. We got to see what I want to do here when as, as I boot up and start. Um, because I did open the shortcut gate. <clears throat> All right, well, King Swaggins cheered 47 bits. Says, shout out to King Swaggins for topping me on the cheer. Ramen117 cheered. Said, so many tips and cheers. Is this a ninja stream? And Big Bosley cheered. Said, Planet Jeff sounds like a 90s television show like Doug. <laughs> ah, crazy... Kayak says, Planet Jeff was the teen club in Saved by the Bell. Ah. <clears throat> All right. Thank you guys very much, very, very much for the support. It is now time to begin with Bloodborne. You guys ready? All right, let's do this. Bloodborne, the redemption run. Continuing now, it's time to start. All right, here we go. 